السلام علیکم جی آج یہ دو نہروں کے درمیان جو دو سمندروں اٹلانٹک اوشن اور پیسیفک اوشن کے درمیان جو نہر ہے اس کو یہ ہمیں حماد بھائی گھمانے لائے ہیں تو یہ بھی ان کی بھی آواز سن لیں تھوڑی دیر جی بتائیے جی بس یہاں پر ایک اٹلانٹک مہا شاگر ہے اور پاسیفک ہے دونوں جوائنٹ ہوتے ہیں پناما کے اندر دونوں دونوں دون, دونوں طرف آپ دیکھ سکتے ہو اور یہ جو کانال ہے وہ پہلے کافی سالوں پہلے بہت بہت لمبا چکر لگانا پڑتا تھا شیپوں کو لیکن اب کافی وقت سے اس کو پورا کھدائی کر کے کم راستہ بنا دیا اور بالکل وہ پورا دیکھنے لائق ہے لیکن آپ کو میں بات میں اتنا لمبا تو نہیں بتا سکتا ہوں ہم جا رہے ہیں وہ والا لوگ بلاگ انہوں نے چڑھایا ہے تو اس پہ آپ پورا دیکھ سکتے ہیں جی السلام علیکم ہم ابھی جا رہے ہیں ادھر ویلکم ٹو بٹوین دا ٹو اوشن کینل ہم آپ کو دکھائیں گے تقریباً آج کافی لمبا بلاگ ہوگا تو اس لیے برائے مہربانی آپ جو ہے نا اینڈ تک ضرور دیکھیے یہ ونڈر آف دا ورلڈ بھی کہلایا جاتا ہے یہ اسٹارٹ ہوگا یہ شپ کیسے ایک دریا سے دوسرے نیچے میں سمندر میں پڑھتے ہیں وہ دکھائیں گے اور اس کے بعد سنیما میں پوری ہسٹری ہے اس کی جس میں انڈیا سے ہمارے ابوجداد بھی آئے ہیں اس کو بنانے کے لیے سو سال پہلے تو یہ دیکھیے گا ضرور کمپلیٹ دیکھیں آج آپ کو مزہ آئے گا دیکھیں السلام علیکم جی آج میں آپ کو نا میڈا فلورس میں پناما میں موجود ہوں یہاں پہ یہ بہت ہی امپورٹنٹ جگہ ہے یہ پیسیفک اوشن اور اٹلانٹک اوشن کے درمیان جو انہوں نے ایٹی کلو میٹر کی ایک نہر بنائی ہے دونوں اس میں کراسنگ کے لیے بورڈس کی وہ آپ کو دکھانے جا رہا ہوں تو اس لیے ہاتھ تھام کے رکھیے دل تھام کے رکھیے یو ول لائک اٹ یہ بڑا یونیک سا ایکسپیرینس ہوگا یہ ہم یہ باہر کا نظارہ ہے یہ آپ کو دکھا دوں یہ ہم بوٹ کی طرف جا رہے ہیں ابھی وہ بتا رہے ہیں کہ جلدی سے آئیں تاکہ بوٹ کی طرف جو ہے نا گزر رہی ہے یہ اس طرح بوٹ گزرتی ہے اور کیسے گزرتی ہے یہ دکھاتے ہیں یہ اس طرح ہے وہ آپ کو نیچے جا کے دکھاتے ہیں یہ والا راستہ ہے تو یہ لازمی دیکھیے گا یہ دس پندرہ منٹ کی ویڈیو ہوگی یہ سارا دیکھیں یہ اور یہ بہت ہی امپورٹنٹ جگہ ہے دنیا میں نا یہ اور کہیں نہیں ہے یا وہ سوئس کینل ہے ایجپٹ والی یا یہ ہے اور یہ فری پورٹ بھی ہے جہاں سے اینڈ پہ آتی ہے نا آپ کو بھی دکھاتے ہیں یہ ایسے اس کے دروازے کھلیں گے ابھی تو آپ کو دکھاتے ہیں ابھی یہ دیکھیں جی یہ والا یہ آپ کو نظر آ جائے گا کینال دو پناما میرا فلور لاکس پناما کینال یہ نائنٹین زیرو تھری میں بنی ہے یہ اس کو دکھانے کے لیے یہ ہم اوپر کی طرف جا رہے ہیں یہ ہم پہنچے ہیں جی یہ سامنے کینال ہیں اور یہ کشتی گزر رہی ہے یہ دیکھو اتنی بڑی بوٹ گزر رہی ہے یہ بوٹ اوپر والا یہ جو نہر ہے یہ اونچی ہے اور یہ سائڈ اٹلانٹک اوشن ہے دس از اٹلانٹک اوشن اور یہ اتنا بڑا شپ گزر رہا ہے اور گوئنگ ٹو دا پیسیفک اوشن دیکھیے ادھر سے ادھر آئی ہے یہ سارے لوگ ادھر ویڈیو بنانے والے موجود ہیں والا نیچر والے وہ پیسیفک والا اوشن والا جو ہے نا یہ لیول ہے
Colombo, Panama. पानी जो है ना इन दरवाजों के जरिए नीचे निकाल देंगे ये नीचे निकलने के बाद ये लिफ्ट है बेसिकली बड़े शिपों की जैसे मैंने आपको पहले इंग्लैंड में भी दिखाया था कि वो जो छोटी बोट्स होती हैं मगर दिस इज इनक्रेडिबल इतने बड़े बड़े शिप इतने हजारों टन सामान ले जाने वाले शिप की भी ये लिफ्ट है ठीक है इनक्रेडिबल ये पानी ये देखिए क्या वो पानी उस लेवल पे है और उस पानी पे लेवल जो है ना ये नीचे वाला है साइड आपकी पैसिफिक ओशन ये समंदर है इस तरफ पैसिफिक ओशन और ये जो है कैनाल ये काफ़ी ऊंची है कोई साठ एक फुट ऊंची है और समंदर से ना और उसके बाद ये सारी की सार कैनाल ऊपर है और एंड में भी जाके जब वो अटलांटिक ओशन में भी डालते हैं इसको तो वहाँ पे भी ऐसे ही कैनाल से नीचे शिप उतारने पड़ते हैं लिफ्ट पानी वाली लिफ्ट के जरिए ठीक है जी ये पूरा जो है ना अपना पैनामा के अंदर जो सबसे मेन अट्रैक्टिव चीज़ है वो ये है दो ओशन के दरमियान एक नहर बनाई गई है जिससे दोनों का कनेक्शन हो सके और ये मैन मेड कैनाल है मैसे प्रोजेक्ट इस पर भी आज मुझे मशन से पता चला कि इसमें भी बहुत सारे हमारे लोग इंडिया तो सौ साल या ये 1913 111 साल पहले उस टाइम तो इंडिया होता था पाकिस्तान था नहीं तो वहाँ से लोग इस नहर पे काम करने के लिए आई थी और फिर इधर ही रह गए ये आपको क्लियर पिक्चर होगी ये देखिए आप ऊपर वाली नहर में ये बड़ा सा शिप इस लिफ्ट में आ रहा है ये पानी वाली लिफ्ट ये जैसे ही इधर पहुंचेगा तो ये दरवाजे खुल जाएंगे ये नीचे खुल के पानी नीचे चला जाएगा ताकि ये नीचे वाली नहर पे ये शिप आ सके इस नीचे वाली शिप इस नीचे वाली नहर के अंदर ये आके तो अटलांटिक ओशन में जा सके देखिए और इसका लेवल पानी का देखिए और वो अभी शिप आ रहा है ठीक है ना अब उस शिप ने इस नहर इस दरवाजों तक पहुंचना है पीछे वाले दरवाजे बंद कर देंगे जो ऊपर वाले हैं और ये वाला पानी जो है ना इधर से नीचे जैसे ये पानी नहीं निकल रहा नीचे से पानी निकलेंगे और उसका लेवल शिप का इस नहर का लेवल जो है वो इससे होता हुआ इस नीचे वाली नहर और फिर ओशन में सीधी चले जाएगी वो आगे ओशन है ठीक है अभी वो हमें फिल्म दिखाने जा रहे हैं तो आपसे इधर से इजाजत लेंगे शायद सिनेमे वाली तरफ जो है ना आपको थोड़ा बहुत सारे लोग देखने के लिए आए हो ये अब हम सिनेमे की तरफ जा रहे हैं बड़ा बड़ी लंबी लाइन थी उससे थोड़ी सी बाईपास किया हल्का सा झूठ बोल कर के हमने जाना है बहुत लेट हो रही है हमें अगली चौंके सिनेमा जो है वो चार बजे था तो ये 2:45 वाला टाइम जो है ना हमने कहा ये थोड़ा सा किसी कैनाल के बारे में देख सकें तो वही सीट 
ये ये सिनेमा जो है ये इस पूरी इंफॉर्मेशन दे रहा है इस कनाल के बारे में that will surround you from here. So, sit back in this. IMAX, never. Water engulfs Panama, the last part of the Americas to rise from the primordial ocean. It is covered now by a sea of green the largest Western Hemisphere rainforest outside the Amazon. Vegetation blankets even the volcanic mountains. Sustained by water, life flourishes. Panama is a paradise, unless your job is to cut through it. There were surveyors sent out by the King of Spain to find a canal route across what is now Panama. They didn't find it. What they found was nearly impenetrable jungle. The first surveyors concluded there was no way to build such a canal. And nearly 500 years ago, there wasn't. lived on. What once seemed impossible is today a wonder of the world, a human triumph, and one of the great stories of all time. giant, longer than three football fields, packed with thousands of truck-sized containers, steered from a bridge 12 stories high. Like dozens of other ships, it's about to enter the Panama Canal.
A canal voyage demands navigation so precise that Panamanian pilots with years of experience board every vessel. A ship's captain cedes command to the specialist who knows every inch of the route ahead. The question is, why go to the trouble of cutting a pathway for ships through 50 miles of forest and mountains? Previously, ships risked a long and dangerous voyage around South America. Shipwrecks littered the seafloor. The only alternative was to ship cargo to Panama, the narrowest part of Central America, and carry it overland to a vessel on the other side. The trek was grueling and slow, whether hauling the gold of the conquistadors or mail for California 300 years later. But it made Panama a crossroads of the world. California Gold Rush brought a flood of miners headed west. It has carried people across the isthmus for more than 150 years. But most of the world's commerce travels in ships, not trains. Enter a French entrepreneur named Ferdinand de Lesseps. He had created Egypt's Suez Canal. He vowed to do the same thing in Panama. De Lesseps' idea was a mammoth cut, 30 feet below sea level, all the way through the land. But Panama was not Egypt, not a dry and flat desert. Panama was crossed by a major river, the Chagres, and eight months of rain a year drenched the land. The tropical setting was beautiful, but for workers, it was also hot, humid, and remote. Men with axes, picks, and crude steam shovels would have to dig a trench nearly a mile wide and 350 feet deep through a mountain range of solid rock. They would have to move more earth than humans had ever moved before. Worse, they would have to survive one of the world's greatest killers without even knowing it was a killer. Nine years of rain, mudslides, stubborn jungle, and disease defeated the French. As many as 20,000 died. The waters of Panama washed away their dream. President Theodore Roosevelt saw a chance to control two oceans if the U.S. built a canal. Panama was a protectorate of Colombia. When a deal with the Colombians failed, Roosevelt sent a U.S. gunship to support Panamanian patriots. The revolution took one day, November 3rd, 1903. Panama was now a sovereign country. engineers of more than a hundred years ago devise a way to sail huge ships through the wilds of Panama. Going back 
in time, we can see the landscape that faced the arriving Americans. They realized that their biggest challenge was the turbulent, flood-prone Chagres River, which could wipe out their work. Chief Engineer John Stevens figured out how to use the river, rather than to fight it. Instead of digging a sea-level canal, he could dam the Chagres. Ships would sail across Panama on a lake. The Americans wouldn't need to dig through the entire country. Stevens would build stair steps of water on either side to raise ships to the lake. Locks had been built before, but never on such a colossal scale. They would still have to cut through the western mountains, but not as deeply as the French. Stevens recognized that his diggers needed a reliable train system to carry the dirt away. He completely overhauled the Panama Railway. The Americans had a plan now. But they could not succeed until they stopped the diseases killing workers. The mystery was, what caused yellow fever and malaria? Most believed they came from poisonous vapors in the rainforest. But an American doctor named William C. Gorgas knew that recent research identified two kinds of mosquitoes as the disease carriers. <laughs> Proving that mosquitoes in Panama cause yellow fever, malaria, and other diseases changed medicine. Dr. Gorgas' public health campaign saved thousands of lives and served as models around the world. The Americans mounted a huge eradication program. Within two years, the canal area was cleared of yellow fever. With healthier workers, the odds of success rose. and difficulties continued, but so did progress. Tourists arrived to see the great feat of engineering. It took 10 years, but with a design that turned water from enemy to ally, the canal was completed. In August of 1914, the SS Ancon made the first official passage through the canal, but the achievement went little noticed. World War I began the same day. More than a million ships have passed through since. The canal changed global shipping, cutting the trip between the Atlantic and Pacific by 8,000 miles and three weeks. It's one of the most famous places on Earth. But few of us understand how the Panama Canal works. The trip starts with tugboats guiding a ship through a channel to the first line. connected to the vessel. Ahead, lock gates eight stories high, the largest ever made at the time of construction.
simple and ingenious. They are based on a Leonardo da Vinci design of the 15th century with double doors sealed shut by water pressure. Today, a computerized hydraulic system controls them. But for nearly a hundred years, the gates were opened and closed by hand for every passing ship. Cleverly, the gates were built hollow. It only takes a small motor to move them. Ships sail through under their own power, but steering is another matter. The steel cables are now secured to small locomotives that maneuver the vessel by tightening or slackening the lines. It's a nerve-wracking job. Sometimes there is less than one foot between the hull and the concrete wall. Some people call locomotives mules after the animals that worked early day canals. These mules can each pull 35 tons. It takes eight to steer the largest vessel. Things simple, only the pilot speaks. Mule drivers acknowledge in an ancient way. When a ship is in the chamber and the gates are closed, water races in, millions of gallons, all of it coming from the lake in the middle of the canal. And all of it moved only by gravity. Not a single water pump in the Panama Canal. Water, soft and fluid enough to run through our fingers, is so strong it can lift a 70,000 ton ship three stories high in 10 minutes. Water even supplies the electricity that powers the gates and valves and the locks. It comes from turbines of the original dam that made the canal possible. When water in the lock chamber reaches the level of water on the other side, the gate opens. The ship moves to the next chamber. In stair-step fashion, three sets of locks at either end of the canal raise and lower ships in two lanes. About 40 a day pass through, then sail across what came to be called Gatun Lake. The ship channel through the lake follows the ancient riverbed of the Chagas. On the other side, the process works in reverse, dropping ships back down through three locks. A transit takes about 10 hours, all of it accomplished using the power of water. In a way, the 10,000 people operating the Panama Canal are really running a gigantic water management company. One of them trained for 10 years to be a pilot and has guided more than a thousand large vessels through the canal. I'm Captain Miguel Rodriguez. I'm the 
Executive Manager for Transit Operations and the Canal Operations Captain. I've uh, been working with the Panama Canal for the last 32 years. You don't find this anywhere else in the world, the way we do piloting in the canal where we actually take over control of navigation and the movement of the vessels is unique. Vessels that are over 80 feet in being require two pilots to take it through the Panama Canal. Vessels that are over 900 feet in length require three pilots to go through the Panama Canal. One control pilot takes it the first half, and then the second control pilot takes over at the halfway point and takes it the rest of the way out to sea. Another crucial job is maneuvering a tugboat that leads vessels between the sea and the locks. Fortune. Our main responsibilities here are to ensure the safe passage of the transiting vessels by assisting the pilots. The job is always changing and you gotta adjust to every changing situation that happens. We are always there to assist the pilots so that no damage happens either to the structures of the Panama Canal or to the ships that are passing through. U.S. President Jimmy Carter and Panama's leader Omar Torrijos signed a treaty giving Panama complete control of the canal. Panama took over two decades later. Some were concerned the country might not be up to the task. But operation of the canal has continued without a hitch. very unpopular thing among the American voters to, uh, to do that, but it was the right thing to do. And I think it's worked out beautifully because I understand that now, compared to when the Americans had control of the canal, uh, income from the canal has increased five times as great as it was. It's operated absolutely beautifully. So I think in every way, it's been good for the United States, it's been good for the Panamanian people, it's begun, been good for everyone who uses the canal. Will arrive to glimpse the legendary canal with their own eyes. Cruise ships sail through it almost daily. But the real business of the canal is commercial shipping. 300 million tons of goods move through every year. Tens of thousands of automobiles. The ingredients of maybe half the foods we eat materials used to build homes and offices. There are other man-made wonders, but most benefit the people of only one region. The entire world sends and receives vital goods through the Panama Canal. Ships have changed since the canal was built. It accommodates vessels 100 feet across and 1,000 feet long that carry up to 5,000 containers. But in recent decades, enormous ships have appeared that carry up to 13,000 containers. Stood upright, they would be nearly as high as the Empire State Building. Such ships now carry a majority of the world's cargo, but they're too big for the Panama Canal. Something had to be done. Leaders of Panama's Canal Authority searched for a way to keep the canal competitive. Led by the CEO at the time, Alberto Alemán Zubieta, who became the architect and driving force of change. The expansion project has been called the most important transportation project in the Americas. I believe it's one of the most important projects in the world. And the reason is that because we're gonna modify one more time the way goods are moved between the two biggest oceans, the Pacific and Atlantic. After several years and 150 studies, they decided on an immense expansion of the canal. 
the entry areas would be dredged deep enough for larger ships. Three huge new locks would be built at each end of the canal. The plan would raise the level of Gatun Lake while deepening channels through the lake and the western mountains. The expansion would ensure Panama's future and it would change global shipping. In 2007, the fun began. Tens of millions of cubic yards of soil and rock would have to be removed. The water management company would now also become a giant earth moving company. The effort would require partners around the world. When we count all of the countries that have been somehow involved with this project, including not just the LOX project, but all of the dredging and, and uh, the earth moving part of the project, we're looking at over 35 countries that are represented here. The biggest technical challenge that uh, we foresaw in, in this program was actually the logistics of it. The deployment of equipment would have to take place uh, from all over the world, and also some of the fabrication of, like, for example, uh, gates would have to be fabricated elsewhere, not in Panama, and those would have to be transferred uh, to Panama, transported uh, overseas, and uh, eventually arrive in Panama for installation. The new 10-story high gates, weighing 4,300 tons each, were built in Italy. Getting them to Panama posed an historic challenge. No cargo like them had ever crossed an ocean. A huge ship was customized to carry four gates at a time. Delivering the 16 gates would take four voyages and eight months. A lot of earth is being moved, almost as much earth has been moved this time than on the original construction. The expansion demanded cutting-edge lock technology and the latest construction techniques. It would take 20,000 workers. Among them is Elia Espino de Marota, a Panamanian native and mother of three, who has spent nearly 30 years as a canal engineer. Managing a project of this size with over 200 contractors is challenging and rewarding. You have to learn to deal with different people of different countries also because we have uh, Ecuador, uh, Belgium, you need to learn how all these different cultures need to work together. The new canal, even though it's much larger, it's 7% uh, less water per lockage. So per ship, we're going to use 7% less water. And we're going to put three times the amount of cargo. Others help dredge channels deep enough for holes that reach five stories down. Among them, Elia's husband, Peter, captain of a dredge that has worked in canal waters more than 30 years. The expansion of the canal is not just uh, the building of the new locks. There is involved the deepening of the existing waterway, the widening of the waterway, the moving of the buoys and the lighthouses that guide the ships through. Gates slide in and out on tracks. Double gates mean one can be repaired without stopping traffic. The main culverts filling or draining water are so large, two trains could pass within them. Forward in engineering and in green technology, two thirds of the water is stored in basins, then recycled. 
the ships using the new locks are too big to be steered by locomotive mules and cables. So, tugboats will guide them through. The expansion brings the canal into the 21st century and reinstates it as the world's most vital waterway. Panama has other wonders besides the canal. It is home to an extraordinary diversity of animal and plant species that have migrated from both North and South America to this middle ground. Panama has the biggest concentration of coastline compared to landmass in all of Latin America. Some 6,000 islands rise along the Caribbean coastline and about 1,000 on the Pacific side. ये फिल्म भी खत्म हुई है और ये हम सिनेमे से भी जा रहे हैं आपसे उम्मीद है कि आप सारे लोगों को ये वीडियो भी दिखाएं ये वंडर ऑफ द वर्ल्ड भी और मेरा चैनल भी सब्सक्राइब सब्सक्राइब करें ये देखें यहाँ से इजाजत ये बहुत ही वंडर ऑफ द वर्ल्ड जगह से अल्लाह हाफिज़